be honest with you, I always be dreaming about if we can generate images from text. And today we are going to look at OpenAI's latest work, Dalit, creating images from text. You may heard a, a lot of uh, papers they are talking about generating image captions, which is generating text from images. But the opposite direction is much harder. If you can generate text, uh, if you can generate images from text, that will be really, really awesome. And that's difficult because usually text, if you, you give up, give me a text, they, they can be so many different possibility of images that can be generated. So how can we train, possibly train these kind of things? So that's what we are going to talk about, Dali. Uh, it's a GPT-3-like model. Let's just uh, look into some of the demo first. Then later on, I will cover the, the theory, the model architectures, and how they do the tricks. Okay, so this is the text prompt. They, they will give this model, uh, Dali, a text prompt like this text, then uh, the model will generate uh, images. And definitely because of there's many different different possibilities, so there will be a lot of uh, images you can consider correct, like this armchair in, in the shape of avocado, and all of them uh, I will consider correct. And it's super impressive. It's quite realistic, to be honest. And like this, a storefront they has the word open AI written on it. Yeah, all of them is really like open AI. And like we can see it's really storefront and images are quite realistic. Wow, that's really really cool. And this model is quite big as well, twelve billion parameters. And like this is even more impressive, the exact same cat on the top, on the top as a sketch on the bottom, on the bottom. Even, even uh, for me to pass this sentence, it already takes maybe two, three seconds. So you can see this kind of uh, inference is quite hard and the AI did it right. It really give, give you a sketch on the bottom and the, the cat on the top and they are exactly the same cat. So that's really, really cool. By the way, I make deep learning explained video every week. So if you would like to receive more relevant videos like this, uh, don't forget to subscribe. And your subscription is also my best encouragement to make more videos like this. After just uh, we, we've seen those uh, images, uh, generated images, I'm impressed. I'm not sure about you. Uh, so let's just talk about um, the model architecture. The model architecture is, is kind of a simple. Uh, it's not 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 that not that different from GPT three. If you are already familiar with GPT three, this should be easy for you. It's auto regressive transformer. Uh, it's encoder and decoder uh, model. Basically, uh, GPT three is like you give me a sequence of text, and the learning process is to to le learn how to generate the text, the token by token in the auto-regressive manner. And this is exactly the same. They trick the, the text prompt the, and the text here as a token. And also the trick they do uh, is they break down the images into a lot of uh, uh, sub images and also use some quantization tricks to, 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 to make it discrete. So image can be breaking, breaking down as uh, tokens as 1024 tokens. And this is a little bit similar concept to visual, visual transformer, which I covered previously, but not, not exactly the same, just the, like remotely similar. Okay, so uh, it's token by token generation, and this model's capacity is 256 text tokens. So you can give it up to 256 text tokens, I guess it's sub words. You must, uh, your image, generated image will definitely be uh, 1,024 image tokens. So they, they will give you uh, one, 1,024 image tokens. This will be, uh, this will resemble an image. So if your text prompt is not enough, you, let's say, like in this case, we only have like maybe 10, 15 tokens. 
then the rest of tokens will be paid in tokens. So that's must have, we must have 256 text tokens, 1024 image tokens. This is fixed. We couldn't change that because this is how, how they learn, um, how, how they learn the things. And you also, when you learn a thing, you have already the position you know, embedding. So this model already memorize these things. Okay, so how about the vocabulary? A vocabulary for, for the text, uh, for, for the natural language is very simple. It's just like GPT-3, we use uh, subwords uh, as a vocabulary, Li likely to be subword. They actually didn't say it in, in the paper, but I guess it's like this. So it's uh, around 16,000 uh, different types of subwords. Uh, this is quite uh, just a half size of the, the Burr model, but I will still consider uh, quite quite enough. And the trick is here. The most important part of this paper is here. It breaks one image. It breaks one image down to one thousand twenty four image tokens. And how you will, you, you will definitely ask how can we represent uh, images? Let's say we we break we break this image down to 32 plus 32 subcomponents, right? But one subcomponent is like a small part of the images. Uh, small part of the images. Let's just see. We will break down one image, or maybe an image of cat to 1,000 small parts. How can we use token to, to represent this? Because token is discrete. So that's where the quantization come in. They, they actually quantize this uh, sub sub images to 8,000, around 8,000 different vectors. So that's how they do this. And I will cover it in the next page. So there, in the end, 8,000, around 8,000 image tokens. And uh, the model will generate 8,000 uh, image, to image uh, token by token. And uh, every token will be one of these 8,000 tokens. And there will be 1,024 in total. And then you can uh, combine those 1,024 tokens back to an image. So this is the trick. This is the trick. To understand how they, how they do this, we have to go back to the paper they published uh, in 2020 by DeepMind. It's also a very creative paper. They generate uh, the high quality images using some quantization tricks. Okay, so uh, how they quantize the images is they break also do the same thing as OpenAI to they 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 basically break an image down to thirty two times thirty two uh, sub images and every images they will go through an encoder go through an encoder here so you after you go through an encoder is uh, re represented as ca capital E then you will have a, a lower dimension. Basically, it's to reduce your dimension. So originally, original you use RGB to represent your images, right? So that's basically a very uh, high dimensional data. And they, they, they re reduce, the, reduce this to more dense um, vectors using the in, an encoder here. You can say it's a FIFO neural network. And basically, this plus some non-linearity. So it's, so it's not really the linear transformation. And after that, uh, do the quantization. The quantization is to to find the the vector. This is, let's say, I just assume this is maybe is 100 dimensional or 30 dimensional uh, vector, uh, just, a, just an assumption. And you do the quantization to find the, to find the nearest the neighbor uh, vectors. This, just uh, surround you. They say we because in in a Dali case we have eight thousand vectors. There's fixed vectors. We must we only have these two eight thousand vectors quantized vectors. They can represent our our sub images. So you must find the one that's closest to you. So which is this? You will find the uh, ek ek is the the vectors one of eight thousand vectors. They represent these sub images. And because we want this encoder to be to 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 be uh, really accurate, so we need to train this encoder. So in this case, they have encoder and the decoder. So this is why you call auto encoder. So the decoder is here. After we 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 transfer, we quantize this to ek, then we put it into the decoder back and transfer back to the original RGB images, uh, RGB image. Then we do write a loss function because. 
the auto encoder is like we after we put into the encoder and the decoder, each the the vector they transfer the back back should be very similar to original vector, right? So this is loss function. The, the difference is the lower, uh, the smaller, the better. So this is the Euclidean distance. And they do some regularization turn. If you, if you are interested in how, uh, what these turns mean, uh, definitely go check the original paper. Uh, there's a lot of uh, details about that. Uh, we got, we're not going to cover that much today. Okay, so uh, hope I hope you understand the GPT-3, uh, the, the DALI architecture much better. If you don't understand that, definitely go back to the transformer first and uh, the deep my paper, then you will get it. Okay, so let's just look into its capability. It's actually, the open AI did a lot of uh, problem to understand how, 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 how good it is to hand to generate in the images. Uh, there are a lot of uh, different aspects, so let's go through the uh, one by one. The first aspect is multiple objects, the uh, ability of this uh, DALI to generate multiple objects. So you can see this prompt. It contains at least uh, like five components. The first component is penguin and the blue, blue hat, blue hat. It also, so we, we first examine, uh, are there penguins? Yeah. Every image contains a penguin, a penguin, a baby penguin, and and uh, a blue hat, a blue hat. Yeah, all of them have, have, have blue hat. And the green shirt. Yeah, exactly. This. But just exact, except this one. This one is yellow shirt. For me, it's yellow. Okay, so it, it's not really correct. And some of them are actually green shirt. So that's a little bit weird. But in general, uh, not not too off. At least it's not not like a. a Ray shirt or white shirt, something like that, and also yellow pants. Okay, maybe this is yellow because it's combined the shirts and pants. And some of them got yellow pants, and some of them got like uh, all everything's yellow, yellow suit. So somehow accurate, it's that perfect. But I would say it's super cool. It's super cool, and this probably is the most similar one. Uh, probably is probably number one, and um, yeah. And I guess they, they definitely use some temperature tricks so they can diverse its generated results. Okay, another is to examine uh, the cross view, the, the like inner and inner content, the outer content. So uh, the problem is a cross section of a view of a walnut. It's really cool. It, it understand what, what does the cross section view mean. And then this test is to Try to challenge if this DALI model really understand the contextual contextual details. Okay, so we can just see the the, the, the prompt is capybara sitting in the field at sunrise. So it must understand sun sunrise and uh, capybara sitting this concept. I would say almost all of them are right. Uh, at least look like sunrise and capybara seeding. So it actually understand quite a lot of uh, detail and they also have different kind of uh, styles, uh, generating different styles of images. Uh, I'm not really sure how they really con can control this style, different styles they it generates or it just uh, generates a lot of different images then they classify this. Okay, another one is to like this is super interesting. A collection of glasses is sitting on a, on a table because glasses can be a, a glasses that you use to 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 see things, or the glasses that you you use to to drink. So they you can see this collection. It contains glass uh, two pairs of glasses and the uh, <laughs> glasses here, and some of them are just glasses and. <laughs> Yeah, different kinds of glasses. So it's actually there are different meanings of glasses and you somehow can understand. Okay, and another one is the, like this, uh, I would say it's quite cool. Uh, Life struck cup of boba. And you can see it's super cute. I, I just think, feel this is pretty cute, so I put it here. All right, so super, super interesting. And they also want to test if Dali understand the geographic geographic information. 
So this prompt is a little bit special. The, not only they don't not only prompts give it a text prompt, but also give, give it uh, uh, some images, image crump, prompts. And the, the prompt is a photo of San Francisco's Golden Gate Bridge. And it gives uh, the blue sky. It actually didn't give it uh, any hint of Golden Gate Bridge, but it actually generated the Golden Gate Bridge images. images. Uh, this is super, super well generated, I would really, really say. This is really just the Golden Gate Bridge and very, very realistic. There's no much noise here. Yeah, so it's Dali, OpenAI's new work. I just released today, actually, and I just saw it. It's actually super hard to train this model. I am also very curious about the training process, training pipeline, how they really feed the training data. And that's, uh, I mean, I know how they feed the training data, but that's uh, like how they write a loss function. They, uh, it definitely won't be the simple loss function as I thought. I think there will be a lot of tricks to make it work. The concept-wise is simple, conceptually simple, but implementation-wise, it is really, really huge engineering work. Uh, if you ever train this kind of model, you will know it's hard, very hard to train, and there's a lot of fine-tuning, uh, I mean, the fine-tuning of the process that you need to do. And they are currently submitting a paper. I think we can uh, see the paper very soon. If you enjoyed the video, give it a like and don't forget to subscribe for more relevant deep learning videos like this. And other than that, take care. Until next time.